Hello, Codeforge here. Today we'll be creating REST service using Spring Boot and also Spring Data REST. We will be not creating any services or controllers. Everything will be mapped from our entities. So you will see how fast we can create such service with full CRUD functionality. In the first place, let's create application using Spring Initializer. We want Maven project, language Java, Spring Boot version 2.2.1. Let's change group ID to com.codeforge YouTube and the artifact ID to the garage service. We will need several dependencies. First one will be JPA, Spring Data REST, this one. We will also need H2 in memory database. And the last one will be Lombok because we want to speed up our development. Now we can check out our initial application by clicking explore button. And over here we can check dependencies and we can see that we have data JPA, data REST, H2 database, Lombok and some extra stuff for testing. Our project is good to go. Now we have to generate the initial application by clicking generate button, select the localization and save the zip file. I have unzipped project and open it in the IDE. Now let's navigate to the source directory, main, Java and the name of the package we have provided in the initializer. And over here is living our application main class. Maybe let's test it if it's working. So we click over here and run. And after a second, you can see that it's working and yeah, it's going on. And our application is working on the port 8080. Our application will have two entities. The first one will be car and the second one will be garage. Let's create them. So we right click on our package. We select new package and we will call this directory model. Inside we will have two classes. So let's create them. First one will be car. And the second one will be garage. Let's start with the garage class. And first of all, we have to add entity annotation. So it will be mapped by the JPA. And also we have to import it. First property in our garage entity will be ID. So it will be type of long and we will call it ID. Now we have to tell JPA that it is the primary key of our table. So we have to use ID annotation. And also we want to make it auto generated value. So we type generated value. And in the parentheses, we can say which strategy we want to use to generate the value. And we have to say generation type set to auto. Next field in our entity will be address and it will be string and we will call it address. Last field will be list of cars and it will reference our car entity. So we have to say list car with the name cars and let's assign new array list like this and also we have to import list now we want to make a relation between the car entity and the garage entity and we want to have multiple cars in one garage so it will be one to many relation to map it using jpa we can use one to many annotation and in the parentheses we can 
provide mapped by attribute that we can set to the garage which will be the property that owns this relation and it will live in our car entity at the end we'll add data annotation on our garage entity and this data annotation from the Lombok will generate for us getters and setters. Let's move to the car entity. It's over here. Like before, we will add entity annotation and also data annotation from the Lombok. Car entity will also have ID so we type long with the name ID and we want to tell JPA that it is primary key and it will be generated value and we want to set strategy to generation type auto like in the garage. Next field will be model which will be the type of string so we say string model and the next one will be the color but for that we will use enum let's create it so we go over here we right click and we create new package it will be called enums and over here we want to create a class and it will be enum with the name of color We'll have three colors over here and let's say it will be black, red and white. We can go back to the car and over here we can create color property which will be the type of color and we have to import it from our enums. We also want to store this enum in the database as a string, so we will add annotation that is called enumerated. And in the parentheses, we will say that this enum type will be string, like this. Last field in our car entity will be reference to our garage entity, so we type garage which will be the type of garage we also have to define that many cars can be assigned to one garage so we have to use money to one annotation and we also want that to make it not null so each car must be assigned to the garage It is not necessary but we can define the column name which will store the foreign key of the garage. We can do that by using join column annotation and in the parentheses we can specify the name of the column that will store the foreign key of the garage. So it will be garage ID. Our entities are good, now we have to create repositories. So we right click on our package, we create new one and we will call it repository. And over here we will have two repositories. The first one will be car repository. And it will be of course interface and the second one will be garage repository. First of all we want to mark this interface as the repository REST resource. Oh, not this one, this one. And also our garage repository has to extend crude repository and this crude repository is generic and the first type is the entity 
and the second one is the type of the primary key and we have to import our entity let's go to the car repository and over here we will do exactly the same so it will be repository rest resource and we want it to extend crude repository which is generic but this time we want it for the car entity and the primary key is also long and we have to import our class by default spring data rest is not exposing any ids and we can change it by creating new configuration class that will configure our repository so in our package we want to create a new directory that will be called configuration and inside we want to create a class which we'll call repository configuration in the first place let's mark our class as the configuration class and after that we can say that it has to implement repository rest configurer now we want to override one of the methods from this interface now we choose override methods and it will be the first one called configure repository rest configuration and it takes a config object as the argument and this config object can be used for exposing ids so we want to type config dot expose ids for and over here we have to provide the class uh, which we want to expose ids for and we want to do exactly the same for the garage so we type expose ids for garage.class and also we have to import this class at the end let's create config directory where we will store our application properties file so we want to create a new directory let's call it config and inside we want to create a new file that will be called application properties over here we want to say spring h2 console enabled and we want to set it to true we will also need spring dot data source dot username and let's set it to one two also spring data source password and we set it to nothing and the last thing will be spring data source ul and we want to set it to jdbc h2 memory test db okay now we are ready to finally test it out so we will restart our application and first of all we will open the h2 console to check out how the database looks like and then we will use the postman to test it out I have opened a web browser and we are on the local host port 8080 and this is the port where our service is listening and we are on the h2 console endpoint over here we have to provide the jdbc url of our memory database and the username and the password we have left password blank and the username is 12 so let's connect over here is our in-memory database and as you can see two tables has been created one for the car entity and one for the garage entity as we can see in the car table we have garage id column which store foreign keys to the garage 
and thanks to that each car will be assigned to garage and our database is empty so we don't have any entries in the tables so let's move on to the postman and let's create something i have prepared simple test scenario and we will start with performing post request on the garages endpoint and as you can see over here we are passing in the body address property with some value so after hitting send button garage object has been created with the id1 let's create a car so over here we are also performing post request but on the cars endpoint and we are passing properties like model and the color and what is important we are not passing garage id to assign car to the particular garage but we are passing the url that points to this garage okay and if we perform it car has been created and it has been assigned to the garage so over here we can check out if our garage has been created so let's yes it's here and it has id1 and address is awesome street and over here we are get making a get request and as you can see we want to display cars for garage with id1 and if we perform it we get the car we have created a minute ago and it is awesome car color red id2 so it's correct we can also modify this car by performing put request and passing id to the car and over here we are changing the model to the more awesome car and we are, no, we are performing the put request we are not providing the url but the garage id and it should be one i believe and if we send it our car is updated to more awesome car and if we go back to check out the cars in the garage it should be changed from awesome car let's send it yes and it is now more awesome car we can also change the street of our garage so we are making the put request on the garage with id1 and we want to change the address to more awesome street and if we click send address is more awesome street and if we get the garage with id1 we can see that address has been changed before we delete the car from the garage let's check out how it looks on the database side so let's select from the cars and let's run it and as we can see that we have the car with the id2 color red model more awesome car and the foraging key column has the value one and this is the id of our garage and if we go to the garage we have the garage with the id1 and the address more awesome street now to finish it up let's delete the car so we go over here we are performing the delete request on the car with id2 and if we click send button the request has been performed and if we go back to the garage with the id1 and we want to display cars for it and we can see that the cars array is empty this is all i have prepared regarding spring data rest i hope you enjoyed and you can see how fast you can create working service remember about liking subscribing and stay tuned for the new videos see ya